I got a package in the mail and it was uh, shredded. It came in a plastic bag from Canada Post. Very true Canadian fashion. Imprint on it and started with We're sorry, eh? That was literally pretty much, well not literally, that was kind of what it said. It started with We are so sorry. I thought it was funny. So anyway, package came in from the Netherlands, has been shredded somewhere, the contents were in there as far as I could tell. Two fountain pens. Sent to me by Abel. Thank you, Abel. Uh, the first pen was a Wing Sung 322 brush chrome, but I unwrapped this and I thought, hey, a Schaefer Targa. Because that's basically a Schaefer Targa in every way, shape and form. But it's not a Schaefer Targa. It has a little special feature. Let's check out the special feature. I'm going to show you the parts of the pen. I'll tell you what I like about it, what I don't like about it. But before I do that, I'll do a writing sample. Let's get started. Okay, let's talk about this pen. The Wing Song 322 Brushed Chrome. I didn't get a box with it, but usually the Chinese pens have a small box, little cardboard sleeve, sometimes just a plastic sleeve, and that's it. Um, I found this pen for about $10 on eBay. Uh, which is, uh, yeah, I would say that's, that's, that's a fair price for this. Brush chrome finish, definitely Schaefer Targa in, in, in shape in my mind. Here you see the pen next to a Pilot uh, Parallel. For As you can see, it's, it's quite a slim pen. I think it's quite a nice size for a lot of people. So let's cover the parts of this pen. On top you have this, this finial, which I like, sort of indented shape, I, I like that. We have the clip. Uh, one thing you may notice is that the clip seems to be a little crooked. It's at a slight angle. I, I personally don't care that much, but this is a $10 pen, right? Uh, here we have Wing Sung 322. And on the other end, we have Made in China. We have a barrel that tapers down, again, just like a Schaefer Targa does. And then we have this little black ring there. So I like this because you have the chrome, black chrome, black chrome, black chrome. And I've always liked that that aesthetic. Slip cap, pen posts, nice size, unposted, nice size. Again, very slim, but that's it. Now what's the real trick in this pen? It has a foodie nib. In other words, a nib that is upturned a little bit and that uh, sort of simulates a brush effect. This feed looks like it's ebonite, but it's very hard to tell, right? So I'm not 100% sure about that. And I've seen a lot of these Wing Sung wrapped around nibs uh, that I think are, are kind of neat. These tubular nibs, they kind of look cool. Section, tapers down, flares out a little bit. And then we have the filling system, which is uh, a non-removable, you can just, I'm just taking this off so you can see, a non-removable sack with the pressure bar, so in other words, an aerometric converter. So, holds quite a bit of ink, and typically, when you take this off, you just squeeze the sack, you can get more ink in there. But very simple, right? You, you, you push the bar, the sack compresses, put in a bottle of ink, let go of that bar, sack decompresses, and in the vacuum that's created, draws up ink. So it works quite well. It's kind of an interesting system. You see that on a lot of uh, vintage pens, and you also see this on a number of Chinese pens. Okay, let's do a bit of writing. So we have the... Wing Sun. Three, two, two. We have the food in it, which as you can see makes a very nice broad line. And we have Schaefer Script Green, the most mislabeled ink in the history of inks in my mind, because this to me really looks like a teal. To be honest, it looks like anything but a green. But that's just me. So this is the fun of a food and nib, right? Because if it's bent, you have a lot of surface that hits the paper, so you have a wider line. I have seen food and nibs with even wider lines. Um, but interestingly enough, it does look like this nib has tipping, and a lot of food and nibs I have seen do not, don't have tipping. It's just like a, a bent piece of metal, basically, so it's quite interesting. Let's do some writing. Uh, there is also often a bit of play with 
the angle and how wide the nib gets. So let me get to that in just a second. I'm trying to keep a consistent angle here. Fast writing, works well, no real skipping. Wetness, pretty good I would say. Line variation, yeah, so this is where things get a little complicated. This is not a flexing nib, they're very rigid. It's also not meant to be flexed. But of course you have the shape of that nib. So often, if you hold the pen perpendicular to the paper, so 90 degree angle, you get a fine line. And then as you go down, you get a broader and broader line. But you mainly see that when you go the other way around. So let's try and do that. Finer. Broader and broader. And that's about the max for this pen, I would say. So there's no real flexiness, but because of the shape of the nib, you get specific. You get some sort of, not really line variation. It's just depending on the angle that creates some line variation. Okay, reverse writing. It's interesting because some of these nibs actually do offer a specific, like, like a very fine line when you reverse write it. And this pen is no exception. So now you actually have a pretty normal round, I would say, fine or extra fine nib. Which is interesting that you have that by just flipping the nib around. So with a Fuda nib, the, the reverse writing actually really makes sense. And there you have it. So, let's see what I like about it and what I don't like about it. Ah yes, the Wingsung 322 brushed chrome. What do I like about it, what do I not like about it? There's a couple of things I really like. It's brushed chrome, it's a metal, so it's, it, it feels pretty robust. It's a cute pen. It looks a lot like a Schaefer Targa. So if you like Schaefer Targas, which is a collectible pen, this might be very interesting to you, just as a fun thing to add to your collection. Uh, the food and nibs are fun because they're different, and that really adds to the enjoyment of using this pen, but I'll come back to that in just a second. What about the nib? It's not the smoothest food I've ever used. It's not the food with the largest amount of line variation I've ever used. I have used a Jinhao Fude, which was which had a, a bigger metal piece sticking out, uh, folded up. If you know, I hope you understand what I'm talking about. Like that nib is bent, so the bent part was bigger on that Fude, so it had more line variation. I probably have reviewed that on the channel somewhere. Okay, Jinhao sbrebrown.com Jinhao Fude. It's probably somewhere on an index. This nib does have tipping though, and the Jinhao does not. So that I think is interesting. Little scratchy, not the smoothest ever. Also depends a bit on the paper you use and the ink, um, but the tipping that is kind of nice. That should make it last a little longer. Another issue that I had, and that one I found a little bit more uh, major. Uh, if you look at the writing sample again, you may see that sometimes the feed gets stuck on the paper. So because of this construction. Um, the feed sticks out quite far, and as you write, the feed may rub across the paper, and then you get sort of like an additional line of ink. So you get two lines of ink, one from the nib, one from the feed, the end of the feed, and that's a little obnoxious. Now, that can be stopped by increasing the angle, right? But then you may not get the very wide line that you were looking for. So this is a bit of a trade-off on this particular tubular nib. If the tines were a little longer and then bent, you wouldn't have that issue. So that is the, the, the main functionality issue that I found with this pen. All of the feedback I've just given can be summed up by the following statement though. It's a tenner. This is a pen that cost ten dollars. Okay? So you can't judge this with the same uh, standards as a hundred dollar pen or a thousand dollar pen. It's a fun pen, it does what it's supposed to do, you can have fun with it, you can be really creative, maybe even shave down the feet a little bit, whatever, I don't know. Have fun with it, it's $10, right? So that's that. Abel, thank you very much for sending me this, it was fun to check this out, I really appreciate it. Guys, I hope this was useful, and I'm glad to see you later.